Okay, we're recording. How long will we be recording? Half an hour. Half an hour? Yeah, then I'll show you stuff. So. Okay. And what we're supposed to do is carry on a conversation. Yeah, just sit here and do the conversation. Talk if you want to, to stay silent. You mean you've rediscovered camera verite. Yeah. After all these years, we're back to the new wave. Yeah. Well, well this is a strange experience, but it's not as strange as an experience I had in Montreal at McGill University. Uh, Jerry Lampert, do you remember him of the old League of Canadian Poets? Yeah. He said, John Roberts, uh, you have to help me, you have to help me. What? I said, well, one of our national tours is falling apart, and I need somebody right away to go to Montreal to record, to deliver a talk at McGill. You know, poetry reading and so on. I said, well, I've never been to McGill University for that purpose. I delivered lectures there, but nobody's ever invited me to do a poetry reading. He says, fine, you go. I said, all right. So I got there. It's the usual. You can't, you can't talk to us. You can't figure out where you're supposed to be. You get to the department, the English department in this case. Nobody's there. Seems to know who the hell you are. It's not like saying I'm John Milton. To read Areopagitica. Nobody was there. Finally, I got out my engagement slip, and there was a fellow there, Jim Smith. Oh, Jim, oh, he's on vacation, but uh, he can't be here today, but he's delegated Mary to look after Mary comes, and she said, that, Well, there are no students around. And I said, Well, they're the usual audience for this reading. I find it all that the uh, students usually. Something going on. And she said, No, but we've taken care of that. We're going to the boardroom. And I said, uh, Giving a reading in the boardroom? Why not? Why not? Let's do it. So when I got to the boardroom, we of course didn't have the key to it. We had to get the key and we got the key. All this was a lot of time. And one thing I don't like wasting time. So what I did was I said, All right, I'll just sit here until you figure out what's going on. So finally somebody came in. Here they moved this into the boardroom. And then the lights. Finally got the lights on. A audio visual had set up uh, a video camera. They, this was all set up. It was all ready to go. And I was quite pleased with that. So I said, am I supposed to make a presentation to the video camera? And they said, of course, sir. That's how we do So Mary said, I'll just talk to the camera. And the cameraman will come in and he'll turn it on. So a guy came in and turned it on. I came in. So I delivered a poetry reading of about 40 minutes to the camera. Just like that. No audience whatsoever. So I imagine that there was an audience there. I say, now if there were an audience here of uh, 300 people, they would be particularly interested in the next one. Or they would applaud the poem. So let's have a little applause. After 45 minutes, I was exhausted doing this, trying to be both the uh, presenter and the audience. And I thought, this is the very last time I'm going to do a favor for anybody. There has to be a legitimate reason for the reading, or it's not taking place at all. The result of that, of course, was the number of commissions I got for reading plummeted almost to zero, because the League of Poets was in the business of creating a lot of work, but there was really no demand for that work. Nobody really cared. That was the first time I did reading. I subsequently agreed to some readings in high schools and other places, but uh, basically I am a no reader. Because if there are listeners out there, I'll be pleased to read free of charge uh, for that. And indeed, I was at the Polaris Science Fiction Conference held uh, a couple of days ago. And I had a reading schedule, and five people turned up in a room suitable for about 25. So that was okay. But these were listeners. They were really people who had decided not to attend any of the parallel programming, but to listen to John Robert Columbus in a reading. And 
they listened with intensity. I could look at each person in turn and in effect dedicate a poem to him or to her, and there were reasonable questions and responses in between the poems. And I sort of sat casually on the edge of the boardroom table, and uh, I thought, that's all right. That's one way. Nice to read to 300 or 3,000, as I once did, but uh, reading for this uh, small number of ears is okay, as long as they've got ears in one place. The interesting thing about sitting on your porch is that there's so much activity here. Mm -hmm. I get a chance to see what street life is like, and I don't often see I wonder what you guys are up to. Oh. Uh, three samples today, I hope. Uh, cool as light is being transported. Uh, nothing for me now. It's too early in the day. And indeed, uh, the key to me is 4 o'clock, 4.30. You find me on our patio or in our backyard. With my wife is a drinking spot. Scotch on the rocks, and Ruth has a Grand Dewey, which is, of course, Scotch. The Grand Dewey of Rusty Nail, Grand Dewey with Scotch. Uh, the wonderful quiver of arrows I have is that I can take a shot of the But I decided I would talk about two things while being videotaped by you because both of them refer to you. I've over the years written about you in a number of my books, and I think you are familiar with that. Someday I should collect them and draw them to your collective attention. But I want to do two things. One is I want to give you a little gift. This has actually nothing to do with our appearance here, but it has to do with my appearance at the uh, Polaris Con. This, as you can see, is a little package, and in the package, is a take it out. I'm not actually taking it out. Is a nice tender on a support. Blank on the back, unfortunately. But on the front is a picture of Maria, and uh, you can see it around here. And the magic words are the photo. So I thought. Who would like that? And it immediately hit me. I know who would like that. And I'm going to present it to you. So, I really purchased it, and I now present it to the one and only Rich Hart. Off camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for you. So. The advertisement is bookmarks, but I think it should be claimed as hefty bookmarks. Uh, kind of whatever. You have no doubt no end of Metropolis memorabilia. Bungie bookmarks. Yeah. Bungie. <laughs> Bungie cards. Put it around your waist. Mm -hmm. The only uh, person who has probably more memorabilia than Sherry is the uh, our late friend, uh, Corey J. Ackerman whom I recall meeting for the last time in break he brought it into Toronto, and I assume there was no demand for his appearance here. I probably, I think probably, Corey has 10,000 fans in Toronto, two of whom would put themselves out to meet him. I put myself out to meet him with one morning out of any opinion. You're a more urban, I'm a midtown person. I'm up in the country. 
Well, I grew up in the city, so no great pleasure. But living at two, the street is maybe two million. Well, I like asphalt. I miss asphalt when I'm not around. One of the things I love about driving to New York is you finally pull off the FDR freeway, uh, two-way, and uh, into Manhattan proper. You get out of the vehicle, you step on the sidewalk, and it throbs. It throbs. About 15 years separated the last two visits to New York. And on the last visit, I sit down on the sidewalk, I stood up and was ready to take uh, stuff out of the car to the hotel when I felt that throb. That reassured kiss of the nation. It's perhaps King Kong like this uh, from this vantage point that the, uh, the summit of the Empire State Building. But when I grew up as the world's tallest thing, uh, does it for me. Something I love. On the other hand, Bathurst Street is particularly pretty. It may not be for the beer store, but I think both like a lot of me. It would make me thirsty for beer. You like it? Free parking. Free parking across the street. Free well, parking. I forgot to have to do there. You escort them across the street. But it's um, busy day and night, really, on those streets. I thought the noise would be a factor. It's kind of like you, it's very much. I guess you get used to the mistakes here. I'll miss them down on the phone. Oh, I'll miss them down on the phone. Good to see you. Come on in. 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 I don't know what you can do with all of them. Can you, uh, I want to get, well, I saw an article in my York University is going to offer a course in 3D filming. Now, it's a lot of money out of it. They got a man to make one thousand three D movies last month. That's his credentials. He's the book. He came here to follow one of my presentations. Beat, 
Wisdom, learn, lust, disease, failure, self, land, monitor, murmur, operation, palpitation, pump, weight, stroke, surgery, frog, valve, heart of darkness, heart of gold. I know you want to applaud, but you're not doing so because uh, you're a psychic or an aesthetic audience, and imagine the one rather than the other. But nonetheless, what I'm going to do is to go over the poem uh, for you so that you can pick up some of those things you need. Now, the third of it's of course a celebration of Reg Hart, who spells his uh, second name H A R T. for red heart. Heart. Ache. Attack. Beat. Breaker. Burn. Heart. Burst. Disease. Failure. Health. Land. Monitor. Murmur. Operation. Complication. Pump. Great. Slope. Surgery. Drug. Value. Hell. Heart of darkness. Heart of If I keep this in my hand, I'm going to be tempted to read it again. So I'm giving it to you, Red. Value it, cherish it, add it to your collection of uh, memorabilia. One of the characteristics of silly form is that it's always about to plot. Over the years, I think it's, it's death has been prematurely announced a, a dozen years.
with him on his next trip to London and arranged with the Canadian Embassy there that he would be sick of fucking himself. Um, he really was not the he presented to the Majesty, who was uh, not in resolution at the time anyway, probably a friend of him. But instead, he presented to the keeper of the prince, distinguished gentleman, whose name Charlie was given. So at the appointed time, uh, Charlie uh, drives up to Buckingham Palace grounds in a taxi. Probably the first time this is rather in the limousine. And the taxi driver's thrill uh, wants to turn to the main entrance of Buckingham Palace, but the school is now the has to go around to the back of the house. It's not for the driver of the car to throw it to the operation.
Good. I come about the 30 seconds, and I wonder how many of you bothered to do so just to see how long it will be. I did not uh, use my wristwatch. Uh, actually, I don't wear a wristwatch, but I bought one uh, today just to keep tabs on the time and have an interest, but I very seldom uh, will wear a watch. Let's just see here, because uh, I have an appointment uh, at 3 o'clock, and then I must be getting away from it. Our host across the street is talking with somebody who uh, uh, that he may be a friend of Ray. And uh, the red rockets, they're now three red rockets ahead of us, but are uh, all empty. There may be four, but you can see five of them. Right it's a shame. I'm a great admirer of the CDC. It seems to have no end of problems these days with uh, absentee management and uh, with uh, failure to keep the vehicles and the subway system in uh, clean up to standards. Last trip to New York, uh, a couple years ago, I was surprised at just how clean everything was. Toronto was falling uh, by the wayside. It used to be known as uh, the cleanest city in Canada. But that's not. And indeed, we see There's a poem by Wallace Stevens called The Continuous Conversation with the Silent Man. I feel these two eyes that are staring at me. Because not giving me a gimlet's gaze, but a gaze, but a, a glazed gaze. I was saying nothing whatsoever. Feeding me back. of the intellectual, the intellectual class should support uh, our activity of this sort and fails to do so. Harper's Magazine and a couple of other of the uh, sophisticated magazines in the United States join forces to try to figure out how to draw up audiences that would be sufficient to market for the stations that they would be able to They came with somebody discovered that there were two million Americans who were potential purchasers of Harper's and of other magazines about it. Two million. In the wealthiest country in the world, with a population of about 300 million, and ease of communication, and no censorship. Maybe if you impose censorship, some of these magazines would be great. Yes. I don't know. Well, what always struck me is foolish that if the government censored a movie, then people flock to see it. Yeah. 